during WWE tag team matches, how do wrestlers know when to tag in their partner? Well, there's actually a secret signal wrestlers give each other in order to time it just right. The wrestler on the ring apron will use their hand to communicate. If their palm is facing down, it tells the legal wrestler not to tag in. But when the palm faces up, that's a signal to make the tag. There are many other secret signals wrestlers use to communicate with each other during matches, and some of them can be the difference between life and death. First, watch this clip and see if you can catch the signal. The title! For the title! Look at the leg! Did you catch it? In order to make matches more dramatic, wrestlers will kick out right before the count of three. To time this right, the wrestler being pinned will have his or her eyes open so that he or she can watch the referee's count and time it just right. This also allows wrestlers to silently tell the referee the match isn't over yet and not to count to three. Another signal that a wrestler is gonna kick out is if they position their hands under their opponent's chest. Now here's how you can tell if a wrestler is gonna counter John Cena's attitude adjustment. Going for attitude adjustment perhaps on John Morrison and wow! When Cena has his opponent on his shoulders, look at where the opponent's hands are. If the wrestler has a hand pressed on Cena's chest or around his neck, this means the opponent is gonna do a flip and counter the move. Alternatively, if the wrestler's arms are dangling or loosely touching Cena, then the move is gonna be performed successfully. Cena for, going for the AA! Yeah. Sometimes, wrestlers have very specific hand signals, and it can be pretty funny. During the Shield and Evolution's feud in 2014, Roman Reigns fought Batista on Raw. It soon devolved into chaos as Triple H and Randy Orton got involved, which prompted Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose to do the same. The Raw locker room also came out to help Evolution, but the Shield cleared house and ended the night standing strong. However, Triple H wanted the Shield to their signature three-fist pose. The game repeatedly made a few subtle motions till Dean, Seth, and Roman to do it. Eventually, Roman Reigns caught on and the shield hit their iconic pose but it was funny how many times triple h had to move his arms before they finally got the message now speaking of randy orton the viper has a secret hand signal he uses during matches watch these two clips and see if you notice anything different orton turning the tables on rude power slam of course, in the first clip, Randy successfully hit the power slam and was unsuccessful in the second. But take a look at Orton's hands. When the Viper hits the power slam, he claps his hands, but when he isn't gonna hit the move, there's no clap. You thought I did. Whoa! WWE World Heavyweight Champion went for the power the clap tells Orton's opponent to follow through and brace for the power slam. A similar method of communicating is used when wrestlers perform DDTs. When a wrestler performs a DDT, their opponent needs to know if they'll take the move or counter it. Like the power slam, a slap in the back tells the wrestler to take the DDT. If there is no slap, then the opponent needs to counter. An example of this happened during Alexa Bliss and Charlotte Flair's match at Extreme Rules. The first time Bliss went to perform a DDT, there was no slap and Flair countered. However, the second time Alexa went to perform the move, she slapped Charlotte's back and the DDT was successful. Now here's how to tell if a wrestler's gonna hit a move from the top rope or not. The trick isn't to watch the wrestler climbing the turnbuckle, but actually the wrestler lying on the mat. Look at the wrestler's legs. If one of their legs is bent with their foot flat on the mat, that means the wrestler is gonna push off and dodge the high flying move. If the wrestler stays completely flat, then the wrestler performing the top rope maneuver is gonna hit it successfully. Similarly, there's a signal that you can look for to tell if a wrestler is gonna hit a superplex or not. Like with other top rope moves, look at the wrestler's legs. If the wrestler taking the superplex has their legs in front of the ropes, then they will counter the move. This is because a wrestler's legs have to be behind the ropes in order for the move to be performed safely. Wrestlers will also use unique hand gestures to communicate specific actions. When Chris Jericho and Triple H were having a match, the game sneakily communicated he'd give Jericho the boot by tapping his quad as Y2J was running toward him. On an episode of Raw in 2014, Dean Ambrose and John Cena were wrestling in the main event. Raw was about to go off the air, so Dean Ambrose made a signal to Cena to speed things up since they only had six minutes left. At WrestleMania 22, right before Shawn Michaels hit Vince McMahon with an elbow drop from a ladder, the referee squeezed McMahon's leg to tell the boss to brace for impact. Years later, at WrestleMania 29, CM Punk was accompanied by Paul Heyman for his match against The Undertaker. During the fight, the dead man grabbed Heyman by the throat. Punk then attacked Taker with a clothesline to break it up. Since Undertaker had his back turned and couldn't see CM Punk, Paul Heyman squeezed Taker's shoulder so he knew to turn around and take the clothesline. While that was a pretty subtle cue, Vince McMahon's was the complete opposite of that. At the 2001 Survivor Series, Team WWE defeated the Alliance, ending the Invasion storyline. The next night, Vince McMahon and Kurt Angle were celebrating the victory when they were interrupted by the return of Ric Flair. Flair revealed he had become part owner of WWE and that he and Vince were business partners. McMahon famously started tugging at his right ear and was then beaten up by Stone Cold Steve Austin. That ear tug, though, was actually a cue, as WWE producer Bruce Pritchard revealed. So his cue for this one night was, when I pull my ear, that's the cue to hit 
get the music. Since Vince thought that as soon as he touched his ear, the music would instantaneously hit, and it didn't, he began massaging and tugging, and he was milking that mother for all it was worth, until finally the music blared, and then he was making funny faces. So that's that famous shot that you see everywhere is Vince telling me to hit the music. A more direct way wrestlers communicate is by simply talking to each other. The term is called calling a spot, and this is where a wrestler will secretly talk during a match to tell their opponent what to do next, or even to make sure they are okay. This usually happens when one wrestler has their opponent in a submission hold, or when a wrestler is picking his opponent off the ground, or really any opportunity where the wrestler's heads are close together. X Pac reversing the Irish whip again. Helmsley. Oh man! A choke slam! The animal! The animal's dead! This is also why some wrestlers have long hair, as it can cover their faces, so fans don't see the wrestler chatting with their enemy. Old school wrestlers would actually take this a step further and speak in a different language called carny. It's similar to Pig Latin, and here's what it sounds like. Double skiz, oops, sliz, and move on biz of his elbows. Round around the kiz on her. Duck the kiz amentator. Piz unch Vincent in the fizz ace with the cowbell. To the untrained ton, this sounds like nonsense, which was the point. Even if someone heard wrestlers calling a spot, as long as they were speaking carny, it would just sound like gibberish. As the scripted nature of wrestling became more well known, wrestlers started using carny less and less, to the point where most wrestlers today don't know how to speak it. In some rare cases, you can actually see a veteran wrestler coaching a younger talent on live TV. In 2013, Chris Jericho began a feud with the debuting Fandango. After Jericho lost a match to Dolph Ziggler on Raw, Fandango attacked Y2J. Dango then went outside to grab a microphone, and Chris Jericho guided him through it. Being a pro, Jericho knew that Fandango had to pause before talking, which is why Chris told him not to say a word. Once the moment was right, you could see Jericho giving the signal by tapping Fandango on the leg. It's Fandango! WWE referees also have their own secret hand signals. After a wrestler performs or gets hit by a big move, like going through a table, the referee will check on them. While it looks like the ref is just talking to the wrestlers, they're actually putting their hand in the wrestler's palms. If the wrestler squeezes the referee's hand, that means the wrestler is okay. After getting the squeeze, the referee will raise a closed fist into the air. This tells the backstage personnel that everything is okay. If the wrestler doesn't squeeze the referee's hand, the ref will make an X sign with both of their arms. This lets the producers and doctors know that a wrestler is legitimately hurt. In some cases, the injury is obvious and the referee will skip the hand squeeze and throw up the X sign right away. In addition to the wrestlers and referees, WWE production crew members will use their own hand signals to communicate with the talent. This was seen during Chris Jericho's iconic WWE debut in 1989. While posing on the stage, a crew member's hand briefly flashed from behind the curtain to give Jericho the signal to turn around and begin talking. WWE cameramen do this too. The camera operator will give wrestlers cues when the broadcast is about to cut to them so the talent knows when to make a certain pose or perform a specific action. Since WWE camera operators have headsets and can communicate directly with WWE producers backstage, the cameramen will sometimes give instructions when something goes wrong. At WrestleMania 39, The Miz and Snoop Dogg were announcing the attendance when Shane McMahon came out and challenged Miz to an impromptu match. Seconds into it though, Shane would legitimately tear his quad. With Shane unable to wrestle, a new plan had to be made on the fly. WWE producers had a cameraman communicate to Snoop Dogg that they wanted him to punch The Miz, which the rapper then did, saving the entire segment. If you ever watch a tag team match, you'll notice that the good guy wrestlers are always on the left side while the bad guys are on the right. There's a reason for this, and to find out what it is, watch this video.